Hi, <laughs> 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 you guys. Uh, Ginger Cook Hi. here, and uh, we're back from um, a week worth of travels, and it's exciting to be back here on Acrylic Painting Monday. And we're going to do something very different tonight. A lot of you have said you liked it when we took a painting that uh, maybe wasn't hadn't had the desired outcome that you want and had to go back and change it. We're going to do something even a little more drastic tonight. I'm going to take a painting that's already been varnished, and I'm going to show you how you can make the changes, and well, it's never too late to go back and to... Uh, it's not that big a deal, but it's important. But I'm going to show you what to look for and what you should fix, what you shouldn't, um, that kind of thing. So we're going to go over that uh, step by step. We also have the uh, two nifty things we're going to be giving away today. A uh, Salvador uh, paint kit with uh, acrylic, uh, professional acrylic paints. And a special thing I'll show you a little bit later with the uh, paint boards and brush from one of our viewers donated uh, donated this for you guys so we're gonna we'll let you know how to sign up to have a drawing during our show tonight and uh, we're gonna answer some questions that have come up and talk to you about the painting doldrums and it's gonna be fun so John if you want to um, scoot down to our our I'd be scooting. table and in the meantime if you see the other little video there's John Little I significant other he's oh, the cool. one that's uh, does all the of uh, with the filming and editing, video editing runs the show, and you can see he's behind, behind his nifty machine. And if you have a question, if you put it in all caps, John is the one that will read it to me. He has to quick go get something. He's quick go, go getting his stuff here, and uh, which is neat. And that, and if again, if we don't answer your question, um, we're not ignoring you. We're not ignoring you. Sometimes we just get a lot of questions. We do what we can. We want to introduce our moderators who are here tonight, who are here to um, make the live chat fun and and it's a safe place to chat and kind of, you know, any trolls they kind of just give the take the broom and sweep them right out. So we ask that you um, focus your conversation more on painting as opposed to you just got a new puppy kind of thing, you know. Save the chat for and for questions and for just commenting on things you want to know and painting topics we ask you you do that um john who's our mods tonight uh tonight we have got uh steffi luann hi, hi steffi hi luann yeah okay. showing up by the way i think i saw judy earlier yeah, yeah judy's yeah, in yeah, there hi judy i L don't know who's seen liz anyone. is on vacation she's liz out camping. Vacation, camping lynn from canada she has computer problems a lot, so I'm not sure where she's at today. She may join us a little bit later. So there you have it, you guys. Now, as you can see from my um, from the, what you're looking at, you're seeing a painting of a um, of a of some grapes and a, and a, some apples. Uh, this originally had been a tutorial in our academy. I pulled it because I didn't like the picture. How the picture came out. So there's <laughs> you can't do it this anymore. is you can't do this anymore. But we are going to show you. It's instead. been varnished, and what we varnished with. The question comes up. Well, I've already varnished a painting. Can I paint over it? It depends what you varnished it with. Now we use Liquitex gloss medium, and varnish. Now, now we're going to do a stipulation here or a an amendment. Yeah, uh, an addendment, uh, whatever it's called. We Liquitex had gloss medium and varnish combined into one product. They separated it now because of somebody complained that it wasn't a true varnish, and it wasn't. It's a it's a medium, but it was a very good gloss medium, and that's what we use. But now she also has a sample you have there somewhere, Missy, of yeah. just their high gloss varnish that we're using now. I'm going to have ginger paint on that little sample this, this, piece. This is old sample piece, piece here. We'll show you what you can paint on that too. So but we, paint. we have found that you know, but we're not saying we're not giving you the pass for just anybody's varnish. It's better if you can do these changes before you varnish. But you have to understand that the acrylic varnishes are actually that what happens when you use a Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. What happens is is that it molecularly binds with the paint. 
It becomes one with the paint. It isn't like an oil painting varnish which sits on top of the oil paint and you can take turpentine and at some point remove the varnish. It, it actually binds. And so it's really just, uh, it's pure acrylic without the color, okay? And thus you can see through it, all right? So and so there you can see, but you can see from here, it's pretty shiny, yes? Because you can see where we've got the, the varnish on here. And um, I'm going to just show you a couple of things. This was an edited, you know, kind of a simplified version of the original, which was done in the early 1800s by a French artist. And um, you can see that he had a curtain here, which I thought sort of took away from stuff. And it's very dark. Our original was very dark to, to, to paint from. And so I just had kept the, the, the basket, the two apples, and the grapes as, as the focal point. So that's what I chose is when I edited the picture. But as uh, the paint, you know, acrylics dry darker, and as it dried, it got very dark over here. And so I went ahead and looked and asked John to print me out a, um, a black and white of my painting. People always say, I don't understand how black and whites work. Well, when you have a well-balanced painting, you should have some, you should have some part of the painting uh, you know, have be lighter than others where you want your focal point. Now you can see, I do have, uh, you can see my grapes in my black and white, but there's no real light punch area here. It's just not in here. Just somehow it got lost in the translation. Very so, flat. And it's just pretty flat. So that's why it, and when you think of yourself as a, like a, the conductor of an orchestra, you tell the oboes when to play or the violins or the guy with the symbol or whatever these guys do. Everybody said, you know, you're directing as an artist, you're directing the eye of the viewer into your painting and you have to have something to talk about. It's a story. So you kind of see, I've got a little bit light here. The light's coming from this direction. So that's where my highlights are. You have to have a light source. You, people, you guys are, that are going and making this stuff up makes me crazy because you come up and you post it and say, I made this up. What do y'all think? And I'm thinking, well, you don't have a light source, you don't have this or that. There's a lot of reasons why you need not only good reference photos, but you have to think about these things to have a successful painting. But the question came in, can you paint over a, you know, painting that's varnished? We wanted to show you how to do that. Now, the other thing is for the, our giveaway tonight, I want to show you what, you're, what we're going to be doing. These are the Protone canvases these little canvas boards they're real fun to paint on six by eight they're actually a masonite that's been treated and then has some um, uh a, a canvas glued on and then several co uh, coats of uh, prep prepped uh, gesso and these are really nice there's three of them plus our, my new favorite brush which is the bristol lawn uh three eighths inch angle Thanks. brush um and that's what i like i say one of our viewers uh, was excited about these, sent John and I a, a bunch of these to give out at our Monday show and plus paid for the postage, which was pretty nice. So I thought that was neat. That'll be one. And then the other thing is, the other giveaway for the night is this Salvador uh, paint set. Uh, the professional, these are professional paints and the Salvador is uh, doing that on their own. They're doing that. We're, we don't do it. They very kindly have done it. We we're going to be using those paints tonight on the um, on the painting. And the, honestly, if you go to our Amazon store, uh, uh, Ginger Cook, um, what what's our Amazon link, John? Uh, Ginger Cook Live slash Amazon. Slash Ginger Cook Live slash Amazon. Well, Ginger Cook Live dot gallery slash Amazon right now. Ginger Cook Live dot gallery slash Amazon. Yeah. So anyway, you've got the you you it'll take you up there, and they're really honestly they've got. You can get the great value if you're if you're struggling for f finances right now and find the cost of paint just overwhelming. These are a great value and they're not like student grade. They're really good. The only thing I only caveat is I still would suggest buying a large, say, golden professional white and you're good to go. So anyway, that's going to be one of the things we're giving away in this. We'll also tell you about our academy, what's new in the academy. As you've been flying around with your hands, your 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 ring is showing on your fingers, and there's rumors that it might have eloped. Could you fill us in on what happened? Um, what's going on? Was I we there? Did, we did not elope, and we <laughs> did not get married. And I I had this ring on for the trip, and I just didn't get it like off to yet. Pretend like we're married. 
Yeah, just just easier. To, so we just <laughs> I just wear it when we're when we travel. All right. So we did not get married on the trip. We so thought don't worry. We, we did look to see, look around to see if that was somewhere we wanted to get married. Decided no. no. So this is what. So one of the things you can do with this is I I wasn't real wild about references, and I thought you know I might like another reference of a painting with them um, with grapes. See somehow some other grapes have been painted. Something I might like a little better. So the, I've I've got this reference. Well, it's eventually will be a academy lesson. This whole picture isn't that cool. And um, I'm just looking at again. I can. Again, look at these and look at a color version of of uh, the original of this painting and see, we're going to just go, so we're going to pop some grapes out, right? How's that? So any questions, John, about what we're doing? No, the major concern is the uh, the, the, the ring. I um, mean, you know, my fault. I should have <laughs> taken it off. Didn't, the, no ring. I want to start back here. These grapes in the back don't don't look like they're doing much. So um, this is a little zinc white, and here's a little bit of purple. And what would happen if we just lighten some of this up? Now, the trick is when you're doing something like that, don't use a lot of paint. Put the paint on the brush and just wipe it off and see what happens. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just lighten that just up a little. I'll take a little more zinc white, just the tiniest bit. There's no water on the brush. And I want the, I want to just lighten that grape up a little. And can I tilt this like this? Is that all right, John? A little bit. Well, you can tilt it. Let's see what happens. I want to tilt it a little bit. I've got kind of a glare. It's sort of hard for me to see, but I, I like that better than what was there. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on with that and say, here's another one. And let's just lighten up. Let's just put a highlight on this grape. Like so that. And see, it's all, it, it shows up. It's, you don't need to do a lot. Some of you guys will sit there and you'll just d dip the paint in like you're scooping up ice cream or something and eating it. Put the littlest amount of paint on your brush as you can. Here's a little bit of the darker purple there. Let's say here's some purple. There's there Moderator go. Lynn has joined us. Thank you, Moderator Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Thank you. Okay, the name of the brush again we're using today is the Bristol on 3 8 inch angle so, brush so, yeah they're and they're, and they're starting to handle. be they're they're kind of it's sort of a new brush and they're starting to um um to be more available um i think what was it Ju i think judy said where else she'd seen them we normally recommend uh one of the places we tell people to buy brushes from is the uh, brushguys.com all one word and use my full name without a space in it ginger cook and go to my teacher's page and you'll see where You'll see the angle brushes I like, and we have not added this to that page, but um, we could have. Okay, so here we go. I want to overlap. Um, now, this is the trick with grapes. Overlap some. So I'm going to overlap these. And just do the tiniest bit of light. Remember, the light's coming where? It's coming from this way, so this this side might be lighter. Okay. So you see how that sort of they're sort of uh, falling in to place a little better than they were. Yes and yes. So overlap some now. Um, I feel like that does a lot more for this painting than if I had done nothing, you know, or just left it the way it was. And sometimes what you want to do is just look at a picture for a while, you know. Um, now d don't rush out, please. And <laughs> look at all your old paintings that you did two years ago. I hate these. I'm going to do them again. Don't fix those. Paint them again. Use those as this is where I was kind of a marker, mile marker, you know, um, like, like when you're on a diet, this is my before, this is my after. If it's more than a couple years old, I would say, you know, don't, don't run back and fix them. Um, paint them again. But I mean, if there's one that you're really fond of and you keep looking at it and say, oh, I wish I hadn't varnished that. If I could have just made the dog's tail longer, I'd like it so much better. Yeah. Um, well, here's a good question. How did the ODGs get good black and white contrast effects when they didn't have the photo techniques that we do today? Were they just good painters? Well, some of the paintings, if you look at them and convert them to black and white, aren't so good. Yeah, some of them aren't. 
And uh, that, but this, but by the way, learn. Van Gogh and those guys did have photography, by the way. Um, and they all saying. learned. And they all learned, and they went to art school, and they learned the stuff. And you know, we this is just a simple well, way to do. They just have better it. tools now. Yeah, they didn't have acrylics either for <laughs> for them, right? So um, I'm going to take a little bit of this red, and I'm just going to make one of these a little redder. One of these grapes a little bit redder here. Maybe put a little blue with that. Tap that off. Maybe this one isn't so ripe. Let's take a little bit of the, the zinc. Zinc is a transparent white. So here we go. This is, I'll add a little color to some of these now. That's what layering is all about. They don't all have to be one color, but see, see how we see how they're kind of showing up now a little better. Yes. And uh, that's a good question though. They, um, they had, um, you know, for instance, Van Gogh thought he was a terrible drawer. He felt like he couldn't draw at all. And so what he did was he had a, a metal grid system made for him. Now I'm rinsing because I'm changing colors. And he actually had used it in three-dimensional, like held it right in front of the subject. Yeah, right in front of the subject and would grid it on. So he was using the grid method in the early days. And the grid method's been around forever, by the way. Here's a little bit of the lighter cast on this. Light. See, you just you don't just do one thing. It's it's um it's layered. I think that's what people I mean, people think. Well, I don't understand this layering business. Don't use so much paint. Um, there we go. So just again, I'm just popping a couple of these up a little bit brighter. Here's another great question for you. Can you paint over a varnished oil painting with acrylics? No, you can't. If it's an oil painting, you're done. You just cannot paint. You can paint can paint oil over acrylics, but you cannot paint acrylics over oil, varnished or unvarnished. You just don't like it. Just, John, what printing paper do you use to print out Ginger's reference photos? When she wants a high-quality printout, it's on Canon Professional Matte Paper. Which we have found cheaper at Walmart. No, that's the glossy. That was the glossy stuff. Yeah, we did We no, did find Canon some is, printer paper at Walmart. It was They had them on Amazon, and then we checked the prices on Walmart, and they were so much less. cheaper. Uh, uh, yeah, and then that shocked me. But, you know, I don't know why it, it should. I suppose... Um, even office supply stores, places that use a lot of paper, you know, are, are going to give you a better price. Um, um, paper's heavy too, right? Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a double so, weight paper. You know, it's so very you, heavy. You know, so but I'm telling also it's 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 uh, heavier to ship. Yeah. So yeah, I just sort of brighten that up a little bit. Now, a comment's been made. By Donna, it looks like Ginger is barely touching the canvas. Can you explain your how and, much pressure? And you're absolutely is? right. I barely am. I'm just barely touching it. Just dragging a little bit of the paint on there. Just barely touching it, right? See, you just see how we just keep keep layering stuff, right? And um. Like I've got a little bit. That's too much paint. So I'm going to wipe most of it off. People say, I don't want to waste it. Well, what's your time <laughs> worth when you have to dry and go fix it? You're going to waste a lot more paint, a uh, lot more paint putting on too much in the first place than if you didn't. How's that? So I want this to be redder, even though in the painting, in my photo, it's dark here. It's true. I don't like this highlight either. And that's going. It's Let's see. Let's just... Let's just bring this down a bit more. Um, you know, a lot of paintings have aged. Um, you know, the fo we're only as good as the the photographs the museums let let them take of it, right? So, um, if you're talking about this, for instance, this apple right here, there's a, more to life. There's um, like there's something kind of dark on the top here when I'm looking at it, like that, but um. Uh, what I want is just a brighter apple. I want a brighter red. 
And, you know, you can do that with, you know, you, like for instance, a light, lighter red up here, maybe even this lighter orange right up here, lighter orange color. That's why I like the Salvador. I can just go grab a color. You don't have to wait for it, but that's, that'll brighten up, but it's not still not as bright as I would like. So let's see. Um, I want something lighter right here. So I'll take a little bit of that. Um, Susan says, my on. picture really keeps going in and out of focus. Anyone else having a problem? No, that would be your internet connection. Go down to your little gear because it's shifting resolutions on you because of whatever internet speed you're doing. And try to force it on one of the numbers there and see if it will pop it in there and hold it. We're not changing the focus, though. No, that's not us. John, how many coats of varnish do you use? Ah, good question, Donna. I use anywhere from two at the minimum and up to six. Depend upon what, what needs to be done and how big it is. And that new varnish is really nice. Well, the the um we have videos on how to varnish, right? We've got, and I've got some new ones coming out too. We've got some videos on how to varnish and, and you a lot of people just recommend going up and down and back and forth. And if you want a glare, that's the way to get one. You have to follow your brush strokes. That's very important. To follow the brush strokes in the painting. Let's see, let's lighten this one up too a little bit. John, I checked right the here. Amazon store for the chair. Ginger recommended. I don't see it in there. Do you know the name of the chair? I don't offhand. So um, do a contact the, us. Let me know. You know, do a contact us, and I will get it added to the store and let you know. They're quite comfy. Yeah, I really like it a lot. It's got the good support that the other ones were not giving us. So yeah, use the contact on that. I can't look that one up now. A little more involved. See, just John, brightening this up painting the, in the fruit. Academy. No, this painting is no longer available. No, I'm just showing so you, you how like to it. paint over, paint over fruit. We have a lot of fruit uh, tutorials in the Academy, however. So I'm just showing you a little bit about how to do grapes and how to paint over stuff. And. Um, Let me check mine. And, and, and it never hurts to have layers. See, so you can just, and it'll it'll just mm. it gets easier as you you go. But you see how so, sort of softened it, did a little bit of that, right? And one of the recent tutorials we did in the academy. Can you zoom way back out, John? Oh, wait. Yes, I can. I think I can. Yes, I can. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. So oh, this is, yeah, this is one, one of, of our Academy tutorials, and this was actually an original painting of mine done from a, a photograph. And, um, you know, just a regular photograph. And it's, um, a, you know, a good example of how to do grapes and baskets. And it's done in the style of these old dead guys. So the painting is done in this sort of old world style. And again, so if we have... If you were to, an Academy member, if you just go under our search engine and just look at, um, just type in the word grapes, you'd be surprised at all the tutorials that come up with grapes. We do like our grapes. grapes. We do a lot of, we have had a lot of store. different ones. Okay, so that's something you might want to look at to do. Now, one thing I thought would look very good here is I was looking at this and I thought, what if I had... Another couple of grapes right here, just right in here. Because like you this. can, right? See, and I'm just taking my chalk and saying, I think I want some more here, like this, just hanging down like that, right? So if I want to paint those over something dark, what happens? They've got to be white dark. first, right? I do white first, absolutely. You have to do white first, and you so get the colors to punch up because it's going over something really dark, and there was never a grape there. So I'm not just. Um, and you don't want any water on the brush. You just want a paint. And uh, let's see. So we're just going to leave those there for now. Let them dry. That's how you paint over this. Okay. 
so they can be sitting there. So if you need to add something, know when you need to, you know, add a color or whether you, you can just do a color or whether you need to do, um, you know, whether white's going to, you know, make a difference. Now, here's a little bit of yellow oxide. And um, I want to come up here and just just brighten these grapes up just a little bit. Then they're they're just they're just a little dull. Oh wait a minute! You're, you're moving on me. You're moving on me. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I moved Bucky. on you, John. That's all right. I'm just gonna switch it here. There we go. I'll take a little bit of this. And I'm zoomed in to capture the action. So you'll see. I'll put a little bit of paint there and then just work it around. Maybe a little bit of an orange color here. Nothing is ever just one color. And you, you see how already the ones on the outside, you see how they're popping? And, no, and they're not all the same color. Now, this is an interesting thing. Some are brighter than others. Just like in real life. Yeah. And so some are sort of tucked in and others are not. Sort of tucked in behind something. And... Um, even though these are yellow grapes, they've got some orange and reds in them. So what you're looking for is the lights and the darks. You're looking for the colors. You want to just, again, we're popping these up just a bit more than they were. And as you can see, it's starting to look better. Now, um, make sure that you're overlapping grapes. If you're saying that one's there, then maybe this one's in front of that one. And maybe this one's in front of that one. And then I've got this one in front of that one. Okay. So oh, don't just do like polka dots on a wall. Yeah. So you might be saying, well, all right, so this is going to pick up a little red here. And you may have to let something dry before you come back and add another color. But you can start putting in the colors, and I think that's really important. Now, if I want to go a little bit greener, I might take a little bit of blue and yellow, just come on up here like that, add a little bit of red to that, like that. Put something greener, but then lighter. Let's see, let's try a little zinc white. A little bit more of this yellow. That's a nice green. I didn't put all the greens up, but that's a nice green. Just mix some. And I want to say that I want something a little bit greener right here. A little bit more white in that green. So I want something light there because it's against that dark background, yeah? So I'll go over these. And in the meantime, this white is still, it's drying, okay? So I'm going to pop down here and let all that dry for a minute. I need to pop these up a little bit. So I've got a little bit of, um, I just want these to be a bit brighter than they are. Wipe the paint off the brush, come down in here to this lighter orange. Now here's something you may not... This is one of the advantages. Now, let me show you this, because this is one of the advantages of um, painting over something that's already been dry. Want to see it? Suppose uh, you did something. No. Suppose you did something. Out. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you I'm doing? just showing you. You oh, can wipe shit. it right off. Yeah. My zoomer's not working. So you can, you can wipe it right off and I let it dry and it. come back and do it again. So if you, if you mess it up, you can... You can go back and see about. It comes off real easy when it's it comes, varnished. It come, when it's varnished, it'll, it'll come right off. All right? It'll come right off. So that's a good thing to know, yes? I want a little bit redder down under here, maybe. Um. Just brightening those up a bit. Um, let's do a little brighter orange. I want something brighter up here. Okay, 
it's not as bright as I want it. Let's just add some yellow. Let's see what we're doing. Just barely touching it, blending that out. Hey, let's anything? thank uh, Eric for the donation that came in through Super Chat. Happy Monday, beautiful painting, Ginger. Oh, thank you, Eric. I appreciate it very much. Eric, I love your peacocks that you're doing. Eric's doing a new peacock. He, he's in a peacock mode. He's in a peacock mode. He's doing a great peacock series, which I really like. Speaking of donations, let me just stop a minute and say that um, we're in, a, in a, our, our quarter for our... Um, we ended our first quarter working on the second quarter. We're now in our second quarter, and we've we so appreciate the donations that have gone to the under the Karen Little Scholarship Foundation in our um, in our academy, or just even through PayPal. But um, what we've done is that we've we started a um, a special drawing, and and we have three paintings here. John's going to back these up for a minute. Back me up right here. Back up. Back. 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 And. Anybody over the course of the next what quarter, quarter uh, up through August, up through the end of August, that donates through to us. August, if you yeah. if you manage to accumulate over a hundred dollars at least in donations, um, you'll be eligible to win one of these paintings. So either the gazebo, the um, the orchid, or the the gal that's traveling. Oh, uh, you know, I'll the, miss that one. The, the far away. So we have those. These are the three, and uh, the we're doing a drawing for them. There'll be three, three winners, and the first the first the, first winner picks for second winner gets second choice. Third winner gets the last one. Yeah, so that that's and what, last time it worked out perfectly. Everybody got exactly everybody got what, they, what they, wanted. they wanted. The coffee cup went to the right person. The bridge went to the right person, and so forth. So, we want to just say that that's uh, so. If the um, that's for this We've quarter. had a lot of people struggling. They're dropping out of the academy because they're 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 not finding employment or things have happened, and your scholarship money is going to help somebody stay in. So um, we appreciate that very much. Uh, John will put you the links. But anyway, these will be uh, well. It's a cumulative, and for every hundred dollars, you have another entry. Okay. Yep. All right. Got a little paper towel here. Remember, for the giveaway link tonight, you want to have 300 thumbs up, people. You've got, I'm seeing 53 to go. Out of the 387 of you out there, come on. Let's get those thumbs out. Practice with them. We, we certainly hope that we have some subscribers in the group now, right? Maybe there's some new, just seeing us for the first time. We have a lot of step-by-step -step videos on how to paint things, but I don't, we've never done one like this where we've just gone over a um over a picture mm. and said okay this was this would be your best bet if you wanted to uh, to to um to lighten something up kind of just green these up a little bit we'll put some other colors with them but uh Again, everything is about has, has always been about layers. So it's, you don't just paint a grape one color. You you try to find the highlights of it. Um, go looking for the highlights of your grapes. Some are underneath. You know they're not just sitting on top. Some are underneath others. Sometimes there's there's even a blue cast to some of these. Um, being able to see all the colors can be fun. When you look at the colors that are in all these grapes, it's kind of neat, right? I think. Tammy says, did I hear Ginger correctly that for every $100 donation in the second quarter, you get your name in the entry? For example, if you make a $300 donation, you get three entries? Yes. Yes. I need to get out and, and do something with my cable up there. Apparently, we have a cable issue. Is it falling down? Well, I keep blinking. It shouldn't be blinking. Okay, so I think the white's dry here, so I would be probably pretty safe to start the grapes now over the um, white. That's that sort of light sort of orange color.
And with these, I'm kind of starting, normally you start with dark and go to light, but grapes are almost translucent. You can almost see through them, those, the green grapes. So um, sometimes it, you can um, you get, get, have some good results by um, uh, uh, just, uh, you know, layering stuff. Did you drop something? Did me? I need to hand you something? No, it wasn't me. It'd be the bear. You're sure you didn't drop something, right? Let's just let's pull this one in front of those like that. Go a little bit this way. Now, don't try to do too many colors at once because if you get you start mixing the complementary colors together, see these still have to be toned down. If you mix too many at once, um, you'll just end up with a, some sort of muddy color. Right, so I want something a little lighter right there. I'm barely touching it, wiping all the paint off my brush. Coming up here and just feathering that off right there. Just to, to kind of drag a little highlight on that piece of fruit. And um, same thing up here, maybe just drag a little bit of orange up here. And then take a little bit of this red here. So as you, as you go through, um, like for instance, I want something a little lighter up here in the, in the, um, in the um, basket, right? So I'm going to weave this around here like that. And um, yeah, we had a little problem there with the cable coming unplugged. So you saw it on unsupported video color screen. Hopefully we got that fixed up now. Apparently when we were gone, the bear and the staff were goofing off a little too much. We want to uh, say it was really fun to say hi to, we want to say hi to our friend Vivian and, um, and Liz Carson, who we met in, uh, on our travels. We met some of our uh, Academy members and got to say hi, did a couple of brief Shout outs. See how you can use the brush like this? Look how I'm holding it and then I'm twisting it. You see that? You see how I'm holding it and then able to twist it? All right, so if, I, if I'm saying that's that light there, then I want this to be that light here maybe. And I might brighten up some of these a little bit here. Again, sometimes it's just a matter of popping a few more colors, just getting them a little bit brighter, just sort of you know play with the eye a little bit right let's come back up here and lighten this one way up here i want the top of this light it's had a chance to to dry now i want the top of this to be brighter okay and then that sort of balances your eye back to the fruit fruit so what you're doing when you're painting with something like this what you're doing is your your goal is to um is to move the eye around with lights and darks, around the painting with lights and darks. That's what you're doing. You're not just painting something. You're, you know, I know you are obviously painting something, but it's not just that. You're moving your the eye around with lights and darks in, you know, brighter colors of reds. You know, cad red, for instance, is a wonderful color because it um, is brighter than naphtha crimson. And, um, can be a very effective color to use, okay? So you see, we just keep doing that. And I could do a little bit more here on the apple here, down here, brighten this up here. Oh gosh, sure could have brightened this up here, down here like that. Yeah, we lost some of that color down here and I don't... So go over your reds a couple times. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, like that was, did I do that? Don't I didn't think I did. I don't think I did. Where's this? Um, yeah, right there. I might have done it 15 before. 15 more thumbs up, folks. Come on. Wipe them thumbs off. Get the paint off of them. All right. So you see, all right. So we're going to come up here and do a little bit of something there. So when you go, all right. So then. I would then I would come back over here, for instance, 
and add a little reflective red on these grapes here that might be picking up some of this color from this piece of fruit. Now we haven't put the highlights on the grapes yet, but um, maybe I'll use that as a bit of a shadow color. Come over here like that, work on these a little more. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Andrew for the donation that came in through PayPal. Oh, hi, Nice Andrew. to see you back. Missed you. I painted this one from the Academy a while ago, and now I feel I should go back and redo mine like you are. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you, just isn't that funny? I mean, I just you, when you look at it, you're thinking, well, I don't know what happened. I could, yeah, feel free, you know, because I think I think we all feel like that. Sometimes you want to just go back and say, okay, I, this is how I did it now. And now I'm going to do it. And the idea, I guess this came up because we have a, a, one of our Academy members and she had posted her artwork first on, on Facebook, which I don't recommend if you're going to send it in for a pack. Send it in for a pack, right? First. First. Get that. Get this thing. Because if you put it, and I, if there's no rule that you can't do it. I'm, I'm just saying if you, when you post your picture on Facebook, you usually get like a one shot at people saying that they like it. And if they've seen it a couple of times, they may not see the subtle changes you've made. And um, so if you repost it, you know, people probably will miss it. But the thing of it is, is that um, you're not done. You're not sunk. In other words, I think there's this feeling that um, that you've, you've messed up a picture you can't and, fix it. And, and it's you all can't over. fix it. It's all over, and you should give it up. And so the question came up: Why can't I do flowers, but I could do books? Or what? Why can't I do this, but I could do this other stuff, right? And so what I would tell you is, is that um, certain subjects are, by the nature of what they are, are going to be easier for you to paint than others. Absolutely, that's true. And don't feel bad about the fact that that's true. Okay, um, it just you're going to have some things. Maybe you're really good at cats, but you couldn't do a dog to save your life, right? Um, and so it's all a learning experience. And, you know, you don't throw them in the towel because you can't do it. You just understand that there, everything is a translation of patterns. And what you're trying to see when you're doing a basket like this, what you're looking for is the pattern. Is that where are the lights and darks? Is there a pattern? Is there a little bit of light on the top part of this, of this basket weave? Where's the, where are the patterns? Okay, and that's what you know. How far back do you go? Where do you, where do you keep the lights? Where do you keep the darks? Where's my patterns? Chris yeah. Jay has a question. Yes. Any issues if you use a hair dryer after on this type of painting with the varnish and all that stuff? Oh no! It's please understand. It's really not varnish. It's just liquid, clear it's acrylic. 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 It's no acrylic. different than your paint. It's clear acrylic. Yeah, now again, it's... this different kind. Again, this is the kind of varnish that John and I use. I'm not, and I've used for years. So I'm not going to say that. You cannot do this with all varnishes. That you can say. Yeah, well, and you know, because I don't know about them, but I would write the manufacturer whatever you well, bought and ask. You, you have to remove it. Yeah, you know, but. For instance, an oil painter, you know, they don't have a varnish that just binds with the oil paint. They don't have that. It but you, you acrylic artists, we have that, right? You have the, you have the paint that... Um, it binds to guys below it. Yeah, and so it's grabbing it and just it's hanging on. This is why um, you can't put two paintings and lean them up against face-to-face -to, -face to each other because if you left it there long enough, you'd never get them apart. The acrylics would just go... <laughs> Like they're kissing, and then they, you'd never pull them apart. You're going, surely that can't be true. Oh, oh yes, it's it true. is. It's, it's true. true. So you, you, um, so the what the varnish does though is it seals it and brings out the colors. It pops the colors uh, much more so than if um, you hadn't done it. And uh, let's see, I want a little bit more of this red kind of color in here. That's a little bit of magenta here. I'm gonna put a little bit more of that color on here over this dark. Hey, we'd like to, like to thank Catherine for their donation that came in through the PayPal system, as well as Joan. Thank you very much. I just remember, 
If you do less than 100, I keep track of everybody, and if you get a, get up to 100 in the quarter, you will be in the drawing. It doesn't have to be all in one fell swoop. We have one person that did it that way, and I believe they were one of the winners, come to think of it. Yeah. So don't feel that that's, that, you know, you have to do a lot one time. Clarice, thank you very much again for your donation. And we have one from Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you very Everybody much. Everybody's the PayPal system. You guys are wonderful. And there we go. So the question is, do you throw in your towel? No, you don't throw in the towel. You just sit there, go back and study the pattern again. And maybe you want to come back. And this is another thing, too, is that maybe you want to come back and look at this another time. You know what I mean? Let let a few days, weeks, just sit it by your living room, just stare at it, have your reference. Sometimes you'll see something. I've got a portrait I'm working on for the Academy. I've gone back three <laughs> times to fix something I didn't like after I stared at it. Going, oh, how did I not see that? It's really hard to see your own trees through the forest of paint. You know, you're much, it's, much, it's much easier to look at someone else's painting and say, yeah, miss that. Because your mind just sort of plays tricks on you. You don't always see it. That's why we have one artist that uh, is from the Bahamas, and she paints everything upside down. She can't paint it right side up. She can't paint it right side up. But her feeling is is that she's much more likely to. She's a good artist too. She she sees the mistakes easier, or the you know the unintentional paint marks. How's that? Rather than mistakes, I hate to use the word mistake, but she sees that sooner than um, than she would have if. Um, See, here goes the light, the zinc white now. Pop these up. Do you see? Do you see? Oh, gosh, so much better, yes? A little They're zinc white right here on the on the apple, right like that. Um, the other zinc white, a little bit of zinc white right there. And uh, just put a little bit more. The transparent white is very effective. But again, determine your light source. Don't make all the lights, don't make it all the same, right? But um, it's not in the middle. It generally hangs out on the edges. It's generally not in the middle. Sometimes it is, but it's not like a polka dot or something in the middle. Um, you know, the grapes are, you know, full of water, and so they're, they're, catching, they're catching the light. See that? And, um, and you know, that's, uh, I think that's pretty... You know, helpful to you know to know that. Let's see, I'm up here with this. Yeah, and we'll just okay. wipe stuff off. Put a little paint on and wipe it off. Put a little paint on your brush, just one side. Wipe it off. Um, we want more of the light on these these right in here. See, on these ones on the inside here, like that, and maybe here, like that, on the outside. Let's get a couple of these. Going like that. But I like these extra grapes coming down, okay? And I feel like we could have done even a little more with these. One, one here, these ones in here, just maybe a little bit blue. Kind of blue on a couple of them. The blue color. Kim would like to know, is there a pattern to look for in moving the eye around the canvas? Kim, that's a good question. Um, generally speaking, you know, it depends on the, on your subject, but you're talking about a, um, you, you know, some part of this basket, okay, is going to, you know, be kind of, you know, your eyes come in this way. So you, you kind of want it to come through and then circle back. That's what you want it to do, not just get stuck over in one place, yes? So you want that and so like for instance when I go to put my I'll put a little highlight right here barely touch it just zinc white right there okay barely touch it on that maybe just here on the outside that grape notice it's I'm not using titanium now in the original photo see he had he had this sort of drape that was open and it, I didn't feel like it translated at all nobody and so I left that out and he had um he had the knife. You know, he had the knife, and I left that out. And he had some extra apples, and I left those. I left <laughs> a lot of stuff out because I felt like that was okay to do, okay? Which your painting. But it's my painting. But, for instance, could I, you know, but 
could we have brightened something up a little bit? Like, for instance, here's some light here, but what, what if I had taken this right in here like that, even just smeared it with my finger and lightened up? Is there some places where I could have lightened up the, um, the tablecloth a little bit more, right? See what I mean? That, that's, you see how your eye is now going back there? Yeah. So playing with that? And maybe right here, next to here, like that. A little bit lighter, maybe right in here. Just an extra little bit of light right there. And we're playing with it. And right here, like next to the tent, I'll take a little titanium now. Let me show you the difference. Here's a little titanium. Maybe right along there. I've got some light. And I'm going to come back over here, just make that a little bit wider. So now eyes moving a little bit more around, yes. And uh, um, maybe I'll take a couple of these grapes, not all of them, but maybe we'll just do a bit of light in a couple of them, of the white. Um, don't have to do them all, just these will be a bit brighter. Now my eyes kind of going here, and I'm not liking that, so I might tone that one down by um, just very gently putting some red over it. It's still there. But there is, Arizona just, would like to know, does the background have to be so dark? Well, you'll notice in, in the, old, the way the old artists did paintings, and you know, that they had the dark background and then the still life, and that sort of, if you made it a really, it's a very, very busy painting. So what you've got to create now is a, um, you're trying to simplify it. So you, you, the background in this case is the, is the, is the resting spot for the, um, uh, the re is your resting spot. And like, here's my table here. And I might brighten this up here just a bit where the table came around like that. Um, and it's, uh, I could even come even a little closer up here like this with it. So uh, again, what you're trying to do is focus, you know, focus the eye, and it's and it's um, and it's fun to see that they're not always successful. Yes, not every every artist is successful, even the old dead ones, at doing this, and some of their paintings are better than others. Yes, and yes. But I think you could you could honestly say that um, uh, taking a moment to just go back after your paint's dry and see what could I do? Could I um, could I add a little bit of a highlight here? Could I take a little bit of white maybe and add a little bit of highlight here? You know, you've got sort of a cheat sheet in your original, and then you can also go look up grapes with the light coming from that direction. You can play with that just wanted to lighten up these right here just a bit more see these guys in front right and uh, maybe here um, I might take a little bit of yellow and blue take a little green color here and just come on up here like this and this you know bring that um, that's you know bring bring out that stem a little more or um even on this one here just a little bit of green on that stem just because that's possible or have say this this grape here be a bit brighter this one let's just get some red on here is it the Like that, just because, and particularly on varnish, it's slick. It's like painting on glass when you first do it till you get some layers on it. So it's a little bit like painting it again. It's very much like painting on glass. So um, you'll see me wipe the brush now. I might come at and did some. We talked about white. Um, what if I had a little bit more white under here or under here? What if I lightened up some of this tablecloth here? Even just smudged it around a bit because you've got when you're painting over varnish, it's very, it's particularly gloss varnish, it's very, it's very slick. 
And maybe I want to do something like this here and just smudge that, lighten this up a little bit. What is the drying time to varnish it again? Does it change? The old, the gloss medium varnish, you would varnish and wait 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes between layers. The varnish they just came out with or they've been using now, the new one is you wait three hours or more between layers. So it is different in how they're treating it. And it's a lot thinner. It seems to do a beautiful job though. So here it is. I'm, you see, I've already done that one. I'm going back over it one more time. Like, like that to lighten that up. That that one piece of fruit right there. And um, so let it dry. Go back and take a look at this. Take a look at what you've painted and say, okay, so how can I, you know, how can I improve this? Um, you know, what can I do? Don't be stuck with just because you did it. And, and, you, and you think, well, I know I put some light on there. Well, maybe you did. And then when you did it, it dried darker. And so then what are you going to do about it? Go back and paint it again. You're going to go back and, <laughs> and give it another. Give it a little more love. Because contrast is everything. I mean, you know, the contrast, the lights, the darks. And you see how much um, more successful this painting is. I think that would be the way I would put it with a little bit of this light color when we've gone over it and lighten up some of this. Now let's go back up here and just say, do we want to lighten up any of this? Just a touch. Just a couple places right there. This just. So you just kind of bring it, bring it around. I think that's the mainly what I wanted to do here. I left the, I left the knife out because I felt like, we didn't really need that, and I left some, you know, this other, we just, we just, you know, we zoomed in on just this fruit, and, um, simplified it a bit, and simplified it a bit, and there's a bit of red right there, too, and I can just take that red and just, there. John, how do you get the glare off my photos? I watched your two for centering them, what's it in there, they, it's, it's how you light it, sometimes you can't really control it. When I actually photograph them instead of scan them, I have polarized light filters and a polarized filter. It's the only way you can do it. We're shooting this with polarizers on the camera because without it, this would be pure glare. You couldn't see anything. Now, here's the thing. You just, in general, the safest thing to do in general is to um, take photos of your paintings before you varnish them. And, and if you want a matte varnish, you've got to put the light on first. And the then, then and, you know, put the gloss on first, and then, and then put the dark. The so, um, yeah, <laughs> then put the dark. Sorry. <laughs> then if put you're going to do a matte, if you want a final matte varnish, you gloss, you do a gloss varnish first, and you put a matte on top of it. Yeah. That's what you do with the golden. I mean, with the uh, Liquitex gloss medium and varnish, and their matte medium and, medium and varnish. I don't know on their new stuff. I haven't gotten any mat yet. I think it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You do it first. I do it so you can see where you've done it. Because with mat, you can't tell what you've done. And the trick is when you're varnishing, don't talk on the phone. <laughs> don't don't get interrupted by the cat needing to be let out. You know, all of that stuff. Keep your... Um, keep your focus, people. Keep your focus. Keep right? your focus. Keep your focus. That's the thing. Because the varnishing, just, if you screw up the varnishing, you screwed up your painting. Pretty much. Yeah. So It's not hard to varnish. I mean, if you've seen some of my videos, it's really not hard to varnish. But you know, I just focus, do it, and be done with it. It's not hard. And sometimes you can take, like, um, you can go, when you're playing with reds, you can go into some very, reds are the most expensive paints because they no, cost the most to make, again. right? So you can go into something very bright like that. This is called bat orange. And you can go into something very bright like that and uh, dry brush over a little bit of a color like this too, just to, and see how that popped up, the, that fruit. Don't be afraid to do that either. Don't be afraid to go back and get out the big guns if you need to in a couple places to... Um, to add it, you don't want to overdo it, but that'll be um, 
uh, you know, you could do uh, yellows and reds are expensive colors. And uh, the um, and you can go up to all kinds of high end reds. Um, and if somebody said, I, I would say a color I would always own would be cad, cad red light, not just cad red medium, but cad red light, and um, which is what something you might want to do. Well, all right. So without touching the background, I feel like we, you know, we have a successful painting as far as the the highlights go and everything. You brought it to life. And I think we did. And I could just come in here like this and just do a dash of that color. The spirit, right? Again, just you don't want to overdo it with too many highlights. But you can then in one place you can have like just overlay, overlay a brighter one. Does it make sense? Overlay a brighter one even here. Overlay a little brighter one. You can smudge it out. You've got it's hardly any paint. People always say, I use so much paint. Well, you're using too much. You know, and these stay wet palettes. This is good for a month, man. I have to thank my daughter Cinnamon for that. Um, Darcy would like to know what is your favorite time period to paint? Um, I like the afternoons. That's when we do most of our studio um, editing and everything. I like the, like I say, I like the afternoons. And Tint would like to know, John, when you varnish this again, will you treat this as if it's the first time you varnished it? Yes. You'll go over the whole thing. You won't probably thing. need to do two coats, but it'll whole king caboodle, the, the whole enchilada. Yeah, you'll go over the whole the whole thing, and um, so I think I feel like we have, um, you know, we have enough colors on here now. I, I feel pretty happy with that. And we didn't have to do a lot of glazing. And um, I think we were fairly su successful with this. Let's see, let's put a little of this burgundy in here too. In the... The palette we're using right now is one of the Mastron Stay Wet palettes. Yeah, my daughter gave it to me as a gift and I have to tell you that I was a little reluctant, but I do like it and I, 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 uh, it, I, I'm amazed that it keeps the colors for weeks. Yeah, that one portrait we were doing, that was like a three, four week project. And we could use the same, we have two of them. So I kept one for that project and we just used the other one. And she could keep going back to that paint and keep using it. Yeah. So are we pretty, I'm pretty happy with that now. So we, you see, oops, we need a little light on this one right there, maybe. Need a little light right there. Okay. And so now we've got we've got a better the, 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 you can go back and tweak a painting and I like to call this as a tweak it's not a big deal go back and do it but certainly just go back and play with your lights and darks and see what you get and I feel like we have a much uh, better painting than when we started with and sometimes that's all it takes now the question came up so if I kind of tilt this up where it's not can you see that where it's not um so glary. Not so glary, right? Um, uh, you know, I like that better. I see one thing I could do when I tilt it up here. I'm seeing a little bit of something. If I put a little bit of dark right there on this apple, right there, just a little bit right there. Just all it needed, something right there. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Maybe a little bit of dark right there. That's a little burgundy color. It doesn't have to be dark, but it's a little burgundy color. I feel pretty good about that. Do you have the original? Oh, we don't have the original photo in color. No, we don't have the original photo in color, but you do have, you can see the... Um, oh, yeah, that's there because we, we wanted to your... Like we took it from. That would be on the website, don't when we get it. We'll put it on the website so you can see it. Now, the question came up about varnishing and stuff and, you know, painting over pictures. Here's one I think um, I'm going to show you real quick uh, because it's going to be easy. This is a black and white photo that we did in um on, on youtube so, oh gosh two or three years ago if we, even i don't know if the video is still up there if it's black white photo i don't think so and i liked it and i don't really like it anymore but you're okay? gonna fix it so i'm gonna try something you know the worst could happen is that you know i chunk it right but i'm gonna try something i want to take the satin golden satin glazing medium oh you're and, gonna do what i did in the black and white days and um let and then I'll the, take uh, a different brush, maybe a soft brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it 
a um put the varnish on the you know the lazy medium on the brush and let's take a little bit of say um this turquoise and this blue together a little bit of turquoise and uh, let's just let's just give it a glaze right now look i'm just going to glaze over the whole picture like this Karen would like to know, have you tried the new matte acrylic paints? Yeah, uh, yes, we just don't see the need for them. <laughs> if we want a matte finish, we'll, we varnish everything, so we'll just varnish it with matte. So now notice what happens is that so when we, um, just glazing this, see, just glazing over this, it just gives it a thin, thin color, almost like putting it through the cellophane. Gives you a thin coat of, uh, of of a blue tone to that. But see how much nicer this looks. Then, um, so sometimes you can do that too. You can just just cover that just a little bit of that blue tint, and just tint the, the tint the painting. Okay, and um, could you go back and you know do something else? Sure, but even that, yeah, I would say even that, and I'm going to say I want this to be a little darker here because of the shadows. I'm going to say I want this to be a little bit darker right here, and maybe just coming up here like that under the bridge. We're going to just do a little bit of that, and then you can still take. Now people don't realize that you can still go back and take paint. And white, like white or something, and um, I'm gonna go back and even while this is still wet, I can add some light to the water. I can add um, maybe a little bit brighter snow in a couple places. To just remember, we're talking about bringing, you know, playing with the eye, lights and darks. Yes. Yes. Uh, just just stuff like this. You can go back and you can do you can do a lot. I'm gonna say the light's gonna come in from the top here, and uh, maybe I want something light under here like that. Puts a little bit of a white snowbank here. So there's just all kinds of ways to change that you know you painted something you're looking at it what can I do what can I do how can I how can I be make this more interesting I think you're doing it you know, you're making like it into that. a Christmas card yeah okay um it seems to be also the general consensus around everybody yeah, all right, so you, you've got that. And if you take to do it, you know, like the little bit of an eyes foot, maybe we want the eyes to come down here, like under here, like that, back there. So you put a little light back there. That, that gave it a little more depth under the bridge here, right? So that's, um, those are small things you can do when you just want to, you know, tweak a painting. Um, and just just glazing medium and uh, uh john asked me to tell you, this is the varnishing um yeah, that's the new varnish I'm that's the new varnish that, as opposed to the gloss medium that's see how it paints even see. on it and john wanted to know how it painted right so paint me something fun so i guess we'll paint something fun on there yeah real quick <laughs> um looks like it's going on smoothly it paints over very nicely, right? Well, let's see now. The, if you want that white to, if you want that all that marky stuff to show up, the 2020 stuff, right? Let's just say we made some sort of a snow scene here. We need that after coming through the New Mexico, Arizona. You people have it hot out there. Yeah, we did a little bit of traveling. And I tell you, one thing we did on our trip was. Um, We've spent some time in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we rode up the gondola. 
Yeah, let's just, I think we're going to have to cover this with white. I don't see how we can do much of anything with this, John. It really, yeah, it doesn't look like, white. it looks like it's going to take a few colors. Because it's going to, what's going to happen is, is that if I try to do anything else, um, it's going to, um, yeah, uh, it's like, going to lift. So yeah. I mean, you're going to have to peel it with acrylic and then kind of, it's otherwise it's going to want to lift. The yeah, paint's going to want to lift up. how slick it was. It's, you see how slick this varnish is, right? So you're, it's going to want to lift. So if you need to paint over that, then this little bit here has to dry a little bit, probably a little bit better than we're doing. Otherwise, this um, this will sh this will keep showing through. Does that make sense? You can't. If I do this, you're going to start seeing those numbers and stuff coming through there, right? But uh, okay, so we're just we'll just play with this for a minute. People always say, "Well, what can you do with this?" Well, you see that how the gold's coming through. So at this point, you would want you can paint over this, but you would want to. Um, You're gonna have to dry. You have to really dry it. So while I'm letting that dry for a second, let me just show you something kind of neat. Let's let that dry for a minute. See if that will be enough. Let me show you something kind of cool. We have got uh, in our academy this last week while we were gone, we released our new uh, way, way go way back on that right. Way back. I'm on the way back machine. We released. Um, this video of uh, just like four hours of uh, how to do this cowboy boot. And this is our new Southwest series. And um, we're hoping you guys, uh, you know, are enjoying this video. We've got some really cool uh, Southwest art coming up. And this is one of it. And what I liked about this was you see, this is the red leather here. You've got the spur, you've got the, you've got the, the raw hide leather for the stirrup. Um, and this is what you call a monochromatic painting. It's all in neutrals. And for those of you, here's a little hint. For those of you who are out there and you want to sell your artwork, um, people generally are going to buy paintings for their living room, their dining room, maybe the entry hall, the master bedroom. They're going to do probably, um, you know, that's where they want the big paintings. And if you stay in neutrals, they're pretty much going to anybody's house. Um, but of course, the subject that. would have to do too. So, for instance, someone had a very modern house, um, then a cowboy boot wouldn't go in it, you know. So, but anyway, it's a little trick. It's so, the, uh, somebody's asking, what is that pole behind the stirrup? I believe that would be a horse. No, they're talking about here, right here. That's part of the. Well, this is the this is one of the straps that's coming yeah. down from the saddle, and, and this the is the and, and that's the spur, and the horse yeah. is back there. That's part of the the straps for the um. For the, part of the leather, the leather work. Yeah, it's part of all part of that. So then we have coming up uh, this week oh, we're going to be releasing Odie, Odie, our German Shepherd dog, and um, this was a this was a photo was sent in by one of our viewers who Odie had passed away, and it was their favorite German Shepherd of all time. It was a great picture, and and she had a good photograph, and we went ahead and did the uh, tutorial of that. Uh, step by step. We haven't done a German Shepherd with the long furry, uh, different colors of brown fur. So that's, again, you see this background that was same kind of used in the, st in the still life is this background that we've used on the dog too that keeps it very simple. You know, you generally don't want bright blue or green backgrounds on your pets. That's, that's just <laughs> keep it, keep it neutral. Keep so it like that, a real. That, that's the new stuff for the Academy. So, um, um, Let's just see. It's just this has probably done something. We don't know. So you say, what can you do with that? Well, what you've got to do is make sure that that, that is here. John, show them the pictures. I want to just give a shout out. It. I didn't have a chance okay. to load anything. You had me doing things. You didn't get it loaded. Oh, too bad. No, but you can go ahead and do that because I could talk to him about Vimeo. So go ahead and dry it. All right, let me dry that real quick to finish that off. All right. While she's drying that, a lot of you have been getting uh, email. From Vimeo saying that you have X amount of time to get your lessons or disappearing. Uh, do not panic. In, in the newsletter, I explain that we are moving them over to our new website, acrylic painting with gingercook.com. And I have to remove them from Vimeo to bring them over to our site. So during the transition, they're going to be unavailable. But do not worry. What you need to do, though, is take a screenshot of everything that you own, and you can send that to me. And then once we get them loaded on our new site, we will add them to your account. 
So again, this is for the Vimeo downloads that you may have purchased through our older system when we were doing Vimeo. But we are bringing them under our own roof now for better control and more people seem to like working with our site instead of Vimeo. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to use the contact us and let me hear from you. So this is dry now, so that should have sealed in here a little bit better, yes? So we can, um, now look how beautifully that's, that's, um, Nell would like to know, is there a secret for keeping the animal eyes even? That is most people's challenge. Uh, I would tell you to, um, to grid and trace the picture, or grid or trace the picture on. Yeah, I would do that. Even you now, even though when we did the portrait, Ginger still had a problem with the eye. One eye just didn't look right. And she had to bring it in digitally and figure out what's wrong with it. So it's the eye, the eye is everything though. Uh, what size is Odie? I'm ordering canvases tomorrow. What size is Odie? 1216? Where'd Odie go? Uh, Odie, what are you? Odie. Um, Might stay on the back? No? Well, this is 16 by 12. 16 by 12. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, let me just double check. But Kind of looks this like is, it. This um, is... Well, it's not quite 12 across, is it? Yeah, that's 12. That's 12. Yeah, yeah so that's a 16, 16, 12. 12 by 16. 12 by 16. For Odie. Yeah. Our buddy Odie. And um, again, you see how nicely this is um, that it's grabbing the paint now. Once it's dried, then the one acrylic is uh, is uh, grabbing it. And it's doing a pretty good job of it, actually. Yeah, it's 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 holding up very well, Don. As far as the um, it's 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 grabbing this paint. You know, it's grabbing the paint, right? So basically, you have to put in, you you have to put something down. Like if what you just did, you probably want to go through and put a bunch of white down, depending upon what you're going to be doing. Well, to, yeah, it would depend on you know. I mean, what 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 do you what do you want to have you know yeah. to sh shown up here, right? Yeah. And um, you know, did you want um. um you know, because you can see, like right now, it's grabbing the paint pretty nicely. Yeah. yeah. So you have to have something down there again. Because that varnish to work is with really the... slick. It's like it's like a glass surface. It's really nice. Yeah, it is nice. It's it's really nice. Um, I like and it again, a lot. And again, that is Liquitex gloss varnish. This is a, they have a gloss varnish, a high gloss varnish, a matte varnish, and a satin varnish. They got a whole series, and it's been hard to get this stuff. So I'm not sure why. But I can only get a little baby bottle. I'm almost out of it on the varnishing we've been doing. Yeah, so um, I'm just going to use up a little of this. John, is a wishing well still for rent? It is still for rent for now, but once we're done with Vimeo, we'll only be up for sale. What are you talking about? The wishing well painting that we did yeah. eons ago. That will, we're dropping that. The rentals will go away. Yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. All right, let's just. I checked for 12 by 16s at HL and they are higher priced. I uh, for just one. Can 11 by 14 be a good replacement? It's a different size. It's a different proportion. So you would have to adjust, cut, or add, depending upon what you wanted to do to OD. But I just want you to see how nicely this is. I mean, it's nicely painting over. Let's see, where's my... I don't want to just put out a little of this dark green here. Karen says she got her um, varnish on Amazon gallon size pretty cheap. Last time I looked at Amazon for the smaller size, I usually go with the quart size, it's 32 ounce. And they were a lot more than Jerry's or uh, Dick Blick, so... So again, we're painting over this. Looks Let's like see. it's working quite well. It's grabbing I, it. Like, I, like I it, feel like it's it. grabbing the. I feel like it's it's grabbing the paint. You're not. You know, it's not like you're painting on the aluminum, like you said. No, happens. no, it's it's definitely, it's definitely <laughs> grabbing the, the paint here for sure. 
Uh, Eric painted the uh, wishing well for his aunt when it first came out, and she loves it. It's a nice painting. There's a great poem that we did with it, too. I just want to say, I thought my poem was... Uh, John and I really worked hard on that poem. Remember that little We poem? thought if our art career wouldn't take off, we'd go into poetry. Yeah, we yeah, absolutely. <laughs> there was a good poem about that. I just thought the wishing well was sort of fun. And, um, again, I love these angle brushes, don't you guys? Because you can just... When is the lady painting planned to be released? What lady painting? Did we do a lady painting? We got the lady in the veil. We have a lady in the veil. Um, the lady? Oh, it must be the lady painting. No, she's not actually painting in the painting. Gotcha, Sherry. Uh, let's see, we have Odie. Um, that's probably going to be towards the end of July. Okay, Snow so scenes got... in summer. Well, as hot as it's been, absolutely. We thought we could all cool off a little bit. Yeah, we all thought that, right? Just so. Um... So I'm having fun with this. Yeah, so right. So right now I'm just painting over this, right? Because I was curious. And I, I know you were gonna get curious at what I was going to be painting here. but I'm just... No, I wasn't curious about that. I just wanted to see if, if that would take it as, as gloss. Well, John wanted to see if this would work. We'll give this away tonight to somebody. Comes out. How's that? We'll give it away. Somebody will. So if you haven't entered, we, we threw one more thing into the kitty. Somebody will get this. We'll oh, so this those people too. that won last time we were on the air would be varnishing. We'd be going out this week. All right. So now we've got... All right, so we've got these 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 pine trees, right? Yeah, good looking and, pine trees too. And uh, I'm liking them. So then we've got the little pine trees, right? So just we, we've done this, right? So then what you have to do, okay? So just give me one second to dry that. I don't think you have to say much. Just you got to dry, okay? Yeah, right, go ahead, dry. All right, we'll take a moment once you're drying. That won't be long. We'll be right back. Well, if you're trying more than I thought you'd be trying. Okay, so it shouldn't take long. Just no. Hey, we'd right. like to thank Anne Marie for the donation that came in through the PayPal system. Thank oh, you, thank you Anna Marie. Thank Anna you very Maria. much, Anna Marie. Appreciate that. Anna Maria. Hope you're painting again. I haven't seen anything new for a while. Okay, so now we're going to put in the the snow here. I guess we'll put a little white blue with it. We're going to just tap in some snow on top of our pine trees. And uh, keep in mind when you're doing snow, the, the it lands on top of the trees and then they're um, underneath, you know, the, the, the dark is underneath, okay? And there, it gets wider as it goes out. We're going to just put in a few more of this. Doing this pretty quick here, but just to get, give you an idea, a rough idea. Can you, you know, can layer and paint, but the trick is you've got to dry. And that's real important. Got to make sure that you're drying it in um, some sort of order. And so just paint along here like that, and the the good a good titanium white is just vital to to anything you're doing. So it, it gives you a lot of. You really got to get the professional. Gold you know, you got to just kind of do that. You yeah, you really want the, the real professional um, titan titanium white, and um, you you want something like that. And I don't know if we have to say much about this, but let's just say we had a. Um, Let's see. Let's put something dark blue back here. <laughs> oh, funny people. And so we're going to just say that there's a some sort of a bank right there. And we've got, I don't know, maybe some water coming over here like this. Didn't dry that, but let's see if we can make that work anyway. 
Just something simple like that. I mean, you don't have to do that. I just wanted to see, you know, what what will it do? Does it does it does it still work? Does it? Can you make? Um, can you make corrections? Can you make corrections? Can you do anything with this? Um, or are you stuck? Are you stuck? Right? Are you stuck? Can you make anything? Do, are you stuck with anything? No. That's the point. You're not stuck with anything. And um, let's see. I want this to be a little bit white. You know that, that that's the shadow part of this. And I want this to be a little thicker on here because I'm not saying this is my one big tree here. And your your donation did come through, and it came through as Catherine. Since you have both names, I don't know which one you use, but your PayPal says Catherine, and we thank you. And we'll thank you again. Thank you. Okay. Thank, so you, thank, we thank just, you. Yeah, so we had that blue background, and you're trying to decide, you know, you know, what else could we, you know, what else could we um, do with a background like this and, and still make it sort of interesting? Um, I don't know. We could do something. But... Um, only the enter the contest one time, please. Yeah, just one enter the, entry. you know, so just, you know, I don't know what we've got going here, but we've got something here. We've got a few little trees. Um, do we want to put in some shadows coming down the bank here like that? It's almost an abstract at this point. You've got an abstract snow scene, right? Then if I wanted to be, let's see, I want a little bit more white here. But I do like, I have to say, John, I do like the way that the um that the that the snow is um I mean that the that the paint is um is uh, is sticking to the um uh you know I do like how that the It's giving me a very smooth surface to play it, with. It's too. got a, it's got some nice I might have to play it, with it's that some, some more. It's got some nice um um uh it, it's actually a nice painting it's a nice surface to paint on actually oh i'll tell you guys a trick you, you have to stay to the end to get all the tricks because i think of them <laughs> as i go right suppose you're doing something and then you get maybe you have to do a hand on a person and no matter how you try that brush just isn't playing nicely with you if you will varnish that little section and dry it and then it will go you can do just tremendous detail yeah with a with a with with that you, a nice you, smooth you, surface to play with yeah instead of, if, if, instead of fighting the canvas so much yeah absolutely instead of i remember that what was that the angel or something yeah it was did, an angel could, or could, somebody oh, so somebody playing the harp yeah the angel playing the harp i finally had to varnish her hand i couldn't wouldn't the paint just wasn't doing what i um wanted it to do yeah and, hey uh, jana we'd like to thank you very much for the donation that came through Super chat. Thank you, Ginger John. You are in the running. If you would be so kind as to use to contact us, so I would have your email address and everything would be super. Because we don't get anything from the super chat as far as getting in touch with you. I want to put you into the running for the drawing in the second quarter of our fundraising. Let's see. What else could I do with this? Um, maybe some sort of... And I want you to see what you can do with the... Um, uh, how easy it is to do look at the look at the look at how smooth this canvas is now if I want to do something small like like little branches coming out of the snow or something you can see how yes yeah, so apparently we're going to give the snow picture away tonight yeah we'll give it away if you guys want it somebody will say we'll, we'll give it away there we go we'll, we'll do that because you guys I just wanted to show you how you could do 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 a few well, things. I just wanted to see if it would work. John just wanted she, to see if it would work. And now she loves that surface, so I'm not going to have to varnish everything for her before she paints it. Well, I mean, I do like. I mean, I do like <laughs> it because it, um, because it gives you. Uh, it, um, it gives you a different surface. It gives you a different surface. I don't think I like this light blue. Here. It also looks like they have the northern lights behind it. The way you did the the the, the sideways. Yeah, in the no, sky. Just That's kinda, nice. Yeah. Huh. Could have saved that for our next auction next month, but no, you know. yeah, could, no, yeah. What I think the everybody's heck? been everybody's been hanging with us tonight. Very and they missed us, and I keep finding that cable. I'm gonna have to take my cables apart now again. Um, <sighs> the cable you see in a cable? What's it? What's wrong? It keeps with? flashing. 
when I move it around too much. I, I don't know what happened to it, but I'm going to have to do something up there. See, I mean, it goes, I mean, you can, aren't you kind of, a, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of impressed with, with the, the amount of detail that we can get, right? And um, just on something like this, yeah? That's kind of, that's kind of cool, right? It's very cool. Just pull something in here like that. There you go. I mean, it's a snow scene. It's got to be cool. <laughs> I mean, who are you kidding? Well, you think you would think so, wouldn't you? I would think so, and it's blue. And it's blue, right? And then you know, so then if I had, um, I don't know, because you know me, just um, John, was Ginger going to mention about what was Ginger going to mention about getting out of the dull drums or being stuck? Well, the doldrums, yeah. So if you're the, the if what you're, the doldrums, the doldrums, what? doldrums are what happens in in sailing when they um the sailing ship finds themselves stuck with no wind, no wind, nothing. They they call it the doldrums. How are you spelling that? I don't know. Okay, doldrums. And um, <laughs> I'll have to ask. So, you, so ha you have to get out of the doldrums, and I think you get out of the doldrums when you paint by kind of, you know, maybe looking at what you've done that's successful and feeling good about it, right? And then. Consider this a challenge for your brain. How can I see the patterns, right? Try to get excited about something. I'm going to just... Oh, snow. I hope that wasn't my toothbrush. And uh, just... Um... Catherine would like to say, Ginger and John, we did miss you, but we're glad you all were able to get out and have some fun. Why don't we shift it today? I mean, we didn't miss a show. Yeah, we just we we put it back we put in. The, we, we gave you a special show last Friday. I hope you guys saw it, right? If you didn't, it's still up there. There we go. Now you've got a Christmas card. I'm telling you, the doldrums, whatever she's saying, do the postcard lessons. I. That to me is it's just like this. It's quickie little things that just get your mind freed up do, and just do, 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 do something silly like this. Ah, That's thank you, Stuffy. D O L D R U M S. Doldrums, yeah. And <laughs> you, you, you get that in painting too, right? So maybe what I might have put on this is a little red bird here on the branch. I, I wouldn't put it past you. But, but it could have one, right? And it could have a green tractor in the background. Could John have, Deere. No, John. That'd be the deer. green tractor in the background. I, I, but John Deere. But, but you see, sometimes having a layer of paint on something is, can be very effective, right? Because you see this sort of these pretty blues in here. You kind of see them. We didn't say too much about uh, about anything. It's pretty, we just, though. We just, uh, we just suggest that there's some ice flow on here like that. In Scotland, doldrums means feeling down and unhappy. Yeah, the doldrums. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's that, that was the genesis of all of this, right? And look, look, look at the slick how slick you can do that. I love that. I love how you can just do this tiny stuff on a painting like this, and it comes out. All right. Well, that's. I think that's a pretty good example of how we can take. You know, just maybe a painting that you weren't so wildly excited about. And, <laughs> that uh, has our know, 20, 21, and 29 <laughs> under there. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to just put this up here for a minute. Here we go. This was our... Well, um, let somebody back out. This, to be working this was our painting that we sort of popped the colors up on. On this. And don't, even though it's been varnished, don't be afraid that you... you to go over it. You can do that. Depending upon the varnish. Check you your can varnish. You pop the varnish. You can do stuff. You can... Um, Come back and add more lights and darks. You can do all that. We showed you a little bit how to take something pretty ordinary and just uh, just by glazing it, uh, this black and white picture, we have something else that's kind of, you know, makes it a little mm. bit more magical. Maybe a magical moment with your picture. And, um, and then, of course, we said, you know, this is just an old painting that, well, it was just an old background that John had used a very high-gloss varnish on. You saw it was easy enough using the dryer and kind of sealing that first layer of paint. You don't have to, in other words, you have to use just, I would go over to get no. You can keep going with your paints. I think that's just the thing keep going to remember. The you can keep going with your paints and, um, and, uh, and, and still, you know, it'd be okay. 
And um, Oh, Vivian brings up a good point. Sharing the center of the cinnamon roll in Albuquerque. Oh, Vivian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Vivian took us, very graciously took us out to lunch. Yeah. It is marvelous. Little you putting the bird in? I expect to see my John Deere tractor back there then. Two of them. She took us to a lovely Mexican restaurant. Look at that, guys, because it, cause it's so tiny, right? Cause you can still do it. You can still do it, right? And they even look like red birds. Just, just to suggest you they're going to have a little head and a body. There you go, some little red birds, right? And um, so if this were bigger, you could do something else, but... Um, why do you need to do any bigger? Yeah, I mean, it you've, got some little, you've got some little red birds, and maybe you've got somebody flying, right? <sighs> no, no flying birds. John's just going, <laughs> no flying birds? Oh, my gosh, she's flying. They're flying. All right, so we got a few little red birds just there on our branch to just sort of make it more interesting. So, but I'm, it would be very hard to like to set the, the surface is really good. All right. So the story was so Vivian took us out for, um, for a lovely dinner. Oh, like. fabulous restaurant. So uh, Mexican restaurant there in, in New Mexico and Albuquerque, um, Albuquerque, that's New Mexico. And um, <laughs> it's still the same place, John. It's just a big well, People may want to go there after the story. Yeah, and so. <laughs> And she she was very fond. She felt some of the best things they did besides the regular hamburgers and regular tortillas and stuff was those these cinnamon rolls. And so she bought us each one. And there was a lot of food already with the hamburger and everything. So I just thought I'd have a bite of John's. And, and um, so he said, well, what piece do you want? And I said, just give me the center of yours. And he looked at me. He started to give it to me. And then he goes, the center? You want my center? <laughs> Cinnamon roll, we all laugh because he never coughed it up. But you just felt you said you it came, came so just, close, just though. Close. I mean, I gave her a little piece of the inside and she liked it. And then I, I still eating it, eating it. And I get down to the center, I look at her, she was chatting a little bit with Vivian. And I go, Well, I could offer this, but I hate to interrupt. Yeah, so I scarfed it. I thought of you though, as I ate as it, I said, ate I could have given it right? to you. As, 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 <laughs> it's the center of a cinnamon roll. You just don't give those up. Well, apparently not, because no. you didn't. <laughs> apparently no. you don't, because because you didn't. No, you call, you call divvies on those? Nope. Mm -mm. Yeah. So, all right. So, there we have it, you guys. That's it. So, let's start our drawing here, John. Are we going to do a drawing now? Yeah. Start the drawings. We're going to do the drawing for the... Oh, um, a drawing. Let's do the drawing for the um, for the Salvador, the new Salvador paint set. We've got the... Um, the brushes and the um and the um the protons, protons. and this little picture right here, which will is that little picture there? And that little picture right there. All right, I need random.org. Got it. So John's gonna start. And listen, you guys, when you're when John's looking for the drawings, let's talk about some of the things that you know. Uh, uh, you gotta find my drawing. I I remember I when my neighbor's kid never wanted to leave the house, and his mom would work. encourage him. It's like 10 or 11, he'd get kind of depressed. He wouldn't want to go anywhere. And she's, he says, there's no one to play with. He says, go out and do something. You'll find other people to play with. And which is true. Sometimes if you just, you know, sometimes it's getting out of your own head and just sitting down and releasing whatever's going on in your mind on your artwork. But every, it doesn't have to, you know, while it's nice to have a good outcome, you, we've shown you tonight that it's possible to go back and change anything. You know, it's really, it's really, there's no reason not to just um, um, take advantage of the times we live in. You've got these beautiful art materials. You've got this, you've got the time to paint. So we're doing Salvador paints first, boss? Salvador paints, which is um, Salvador. This set, set right large here. Large tube, large tube paint This set. is an extra large, well, you know, here, the big, big, the big tubes, here. the bonus, those go. seven ounce tubes, 20 millimeter, 24 oh. professional premium acrylic. Uh, paints and they do have the two whites uh which are you know to me a little bit more translucent but they're wonderful this is a wonderful paint you saw me use all the colors tonight and how well they came out and i've been i've been on last uh probably since a year and a half now i've been doing exclusively these on youtube we do other brands of paint in our academy we do the golden for the larger paintings and but for, on youtube we've been doing these and we do that because a lot of people you know are constrained by budget and this is a great way to um 
to keep painting if you're finding yourself a little short on money, but still want a great product. Well, they're perfect mm -hmm. for travel, all that stuff. And we hope Nancy Lewis is going to enjoy them. Nancy Lewis. All right. Congratulations, Nancy. And she's from Virginia. Okay. Virginia. Okay. And next up for bid is the um, is the um, Crotone thingies. Uh, well, we can do this picture real quick. And then we'll do the Protone. Do the painting. And I dropped the brush that goes with the painting on the floor. Let me find it. Oh, please don't. Please, please, please pick I, it I up. I dropped it on the floor, but there's the, it's the brush and the photo. Oh, here it is. You picked it up for me. Oh, yeah. I already picked that one up. Is that the oh, one you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. So, Protone winner. I got that one. Is who's the Protone winner? It's going to go to Pensacola, Florida. Oh, Pensacola. All right. So you're going to get the we brush. We've through Pensacola. And, the, and, the, and, the, and there's three panels on this. you got three. And they're six yeah. by eight. They're real fun to paint on. Well, you like them. I bought a whole case of them. Yeah. So we got the winner of the Protones. Protones and brush is Bev Ogonchi. G-U-A-N-C-I. How would you say it? Ganchi? Ganchi? Well, that's what I said. G-A-U-N, Ganchi. Yeah, Ganchi. Bev Ganchi. Well, congratulations, Bev. You're going to love these. These are great. And, and um, I want to thank everybody for their comments uh, last week on, on their preferred store to buy online and all the problems people have had with certain stores. But nonetheless, they uh, the these only come from Jerry's Artorama, the Protones, that yeah. sells them. And they are good. They have the panels, and they are nice. Much better, that you know, we think so. So now we have, um, do we have now, that? Now, now you're going for the painting. A little painting, yeah, the little, little painting. You saw this little impromptu painting come to life before your eyes. Got the little... Um, and that's going to go all the way to... Wait a second, I've got to color it so I can find it again. That's going to go to Arizona. Wow, snow in Arizona. Okay, all right. And that Ooh. is the, it's a perfect painting for somebody in Arizona. Is it? Well, it'd be, you know, well, nice around holiday times. You could yeah. put it out during the holidays. We can want a little snow picture. Probably not a good summit painting, but. Snow painting. Hey, we'd like to thank everybody for joining us this evening. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so right now before we disappear. You put these videos in your playlist. That really helps. It. Tell other people about us. You know, spread the word. You know, we know, we appreciate that so much. You know, and then and we want to know if, if somebody joins us. Tell us. Did Nancy send you or Judy send you or somebody sent you? Tell us who sent you. And uh, you know, but maybe they tell us that, that, that you know they they find us and who knows if they. Um, you, you may find something yeah. a, a nice surprise for you, but uh, Charlene you know, Benson. Charlene, congratulations! All right, so you've got our little uh, pine trees and uh, snow video with the little birds from Arizona. Arizona, and we love your hot weather. Yeah, and, you, and again, demonstrated on how to paint over something that had been completely varnished, which is kind of cool. So it's been varnished twice. Yeah, and it'll get varnished again, and it's okay because it's, be it's all acrylic. So everybody's kind of clear on that. You don't have to gesso over, and you're not going to paint acrylics on top of oil paintings. We summarized that. Yes. yes you're not yes. going to use a lot of water on your brush, a little tiny bit of paint. Just wipe it off. Those are some of the things uh, you want to learn. And remember that um, um, it's all fixable. Ha ha! That's what you want to know. It's all fixable. We want to thank um, our you know our moderators and everybody for coming today and. Um, uh, the question I'd like you to put in the comments below, the question I have for you as we close, if there was, if you feel like there's one thing that's holding you back from painting right now or getting enthusiastic about, what do you think the one thing is that's holding you back? Oh, that's a good question. You know, what's, what do you feel is holding you back? And we'll see you next week. And I'm looking forward to seeing all your paintings uh, shared with us either through personal art coaching or gingercooklive.gallery or on our Facebook page, um, uh, Acrylic Painting with Ginger Cook on Facebook. If you haven't joined that, do so now. That's free. And then we can see what you're doing. We're excited about, we're excited about our channel. We want you to be excited about it and tell others. And thank you guys. Bye, everyone.